just say we have a guest speaker, but it's Gili. Gili is part of the house. So can we give him a hand <laughs> as he comes up? Gili, welcome. Bless you. Thanks, Niels. <laughs> Guys, it's so good to be with you. For those of uh, we haven't greeted yet, hello. Um, yes. Hello there. Hello. Um, I, see, I see some new faces. I think the elite, elite people, are you guys here? Can you wave at us? Yes, I'll speak my best British this morning. Uh, welcome, guys. We're so glad you're here. Are you enjoying your stay? Is it cold there in Lebak? Yeah, we, if you want some sympathy about Lebak, just speak to the people next to you or behind you. They, um, they, they know. They know. Um, so for, for those of you that don't know me, um, I'm married to Ilana. She's sitting there at the back. And we were pastors in this church, and we um, loved it. We still see this as our church. Um, and uh, end of last year, we, we felt the Lord lead us to do a DTS in Butch of Struem, um, which is a six-month discipleship school. Can you guys hear me? Okay, it's just me. It's just my ear. Keith, is it? It's, it's fine. Okay, okay. Um, so we did a, a, a DTS. Can I do it? Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'm just going to stand here. I can't lack a year myself. I'm, I know I'm short, so... Ooh. Tan is there after. Can you let me see? Okay. Is, it, is this fine for you guys? Then I can hear myself better. Lacquer. Um, what was I saying? We were doing a DTS. Um, it was amazing. I don't know if I've, we've seen you guys. We, we saw you while we were still doing the last part of the outreach. And um, so you go on three months outreach, three months lecture phase, and um, it was an amazing experience. We finished now, so we're part of the Fire and Fragrance staff, and um, I just want to maybe update you on two or three things. I don't know if you guys know this, but this church support us to do this, okay, financially. So what you're sowing, um, not everything, maybe we can make it everything, but what you're sowing, um, <laughs> we're receiving a part of it, and um, that enables us to, um, to do these things, and so we're so thankful for what you guys are sowing, and um, I believe this house is, is part of it. We had a great meeting with Niels and Frankie. We're excited about um, moving back um, to Paul and to pioneer a base here, and we see you guys as, as part of that. So, so that's in the pipeline for us. We thought um, that it's going to be the end of this year. We had to pray about: Do we do something on our own, or do we do something with Fire and Fragrance? And so we felt we want to do it with them. And um, if we want to do it with them, then we we need to be sent from that base. They need to multiply. It would be the first base. Ever that's not planted out of Kona, Hawaii. So um, it's a first for them. It's a first for us. It's a bit different than church. You've got, um, there's 140 staff members that is missionaries, some in their 20s, some in their 30s, some in their 40s. Um, and they're from all over. So, so it, it works a bit different. We need to learn a lot um, and to grow in, 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 in doing that. Um, but they, they've got a heart for Paul as well. The, the vision from the beginning, they've actually got this peer. We'll know this in the, the offices, Porch, Paddle, George. Is the, the three places that they felt God will lead them to plant something. We didn't know that it will be us. Um, we actually asked them, hey, won't you guys send someone? But now it's us. Um, so so we're going we're gonna to be there a bit longer. We don't know exactly the, the time and date when we will be back. Um, hopefully it will um, not be longer than two years. Um, but we, we're learning. We're waiting for them to be ready to multiply. We're going to bring a whole group of missionaries with us. Um, hoping and praying for 40 to 50 people to join us as a pioneer team to do what um, we believe the Lord wants to do in, in the Western Cape. Again, we'll be based here. Some of them will be in this church. We, we might force them to be in this church. We don't know yet if we can do that. Um, but uh, it, it's going to be a wild, fantastic time. And please do pray with us for that. So we're excited about that. We're also working on the high schools um, stuff. We 
we want to plant a Jesus club in every high school in South Africa. Now, there's 25,000 of them. Um, well, not 25,000 high schools, 25,000 schools. Um, and so we, we're working on that, figuring it out, testing it in some of the schools, working with Pietri, um, and super excited to get that going. So, so that's the second thing that we're working on. And then the third thing is, I don't know who of you have maybe heard of The Send. The Send is a... Is a actually a stadium gathering that's that's mobilizing the church towards certain outcomes which is high schools universities adoption um, poverty and 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 um, they're coming to south africa which is amazing they sold out the stadium in brazil in seven seconds okay it's faster than you two it was the fastest book like the compute ticket fastest compute ticket sold out ever in the history uh, it's a Christian event. So um, we are really excited about that. That would have happened next year, but they changed it. And so now it's going to happen over three years in 12 cities, which I think one will be um, here in, in the valley. Um, and we're super excited to be part of that team um, to build a network in South Africa for churches to work together, to, to hit some of these certain outcomes um, so that we will not see a high school that's not reached for the gospel and there's not someone preaching in in there um and we'll we'll really be orphanless in south africa that would be amazing okay so 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 we're part of that team we want to build out the high schools and then we're learning to to pioneer a base um in the valley with you guys so please do pray for us thank you that you so um into that and to partner with us in that there's some of you guys that that pray for us that um that have partnered with us as well and we're just so blessed this is home we love you guys um so thank you so much we're here for ilana's 30-year reunion school reunion 20 year i make the joke the whole weekend she doesn't think it's funny at all um so we had the reunion the whole weekend. Um, I had to watch into schools yesterday. I, I'm not a boys out. I actually was in Marmersbury, uh, which is lovely. But I know Wellington people love Marmersbury. Um, and, and, but I, I was a teacher for two years at, at Boys Eye, so I feel more blue than green. Um, but I was in the enemy camp yesterday, sitting with the reunion. And so I don't know if you've watched sport and you can't really scream. It's like, you took a and then I'm just like, <laughs> gym, gym, gym. <laughs> so that was my yesterday. Uh, it was very frustrating. Uh, we had, a, but we had a good weekend, and we're here for a week, um, some more to um, to just catch up with with a lot of people. Uh, so it's so nice to be with you. We're gonna read out of Matthew 15. Okay, Matthew 15. Just want to say, love the worship. Thank you, Colin. I don't know, I think she's in here. Um, and Danas and everyone in the band. It was amazing. I just felt, uh, maybe, maybe this, I just felt while we were worshiping, it's always just God's presence in worship. Guys, we, we should never take it for granted. Um, I've, my, my new life, we get to visit a lot of churches, different churches, and um, just to say that to have God's presence in worship is not something that happens everywhere, okay? And as it happens here, it's special. So um, I just felt that there's Neil's undercurrents almost running through the church, rivers, and I just, I'm so excited. I just feel like it's going to, these wells are going to open up and um, the Lord is going to pour himself out over you guys more. Um, normally when, when that happens, it starts with holiness. Okay, but I'm not going to preach about holiness this morning, so you can relax. Uh, but just want to say, like, like we did in communion, we're happy to repent. We're happy to turn away from things so that we can be intimate with Jesus more, okay? Um, so, so when God wants to pour himself out over a group of people, if you feel convicted about stuff, just repent. Just say, Lord, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I want to be with you. I want to love you even more, even better. And um, I believe the Lord will visit you guys even more as he is okay and when it happens more um, please do call us so that we can be here every Sunday don't know how we're going to do that but we'll figure it out Matthew 15 um, this is a, a, a portion I read this to my kids and it's a difficult piece of scripture because of the way in which Jesus treats this woman 
<laughs> this lady, she's a Canaanite woman, and it's a, it's a sort of a dif difficult thing to stomach. When you read it the first time, it's almost offensive, okay? Um, the way he speaks to her, the way he, he addresses her, um, but I think there's something so valuable in it. So I know you guys have been speaking about becoming like Jesus. So this morning, we're becoming like Jesus in having persistent faith. Okay, so persistent faith. Say to the person next to you, persistent faith. Anhoudende geloof. Okay, we want bull terrier Christians in the house. Okay, that doesn't roll around when the enemy comes to scare us and, and lay on their back, but we'll fight a bit in the kingdom. Huh? Are you guys ready? We're gonna... you, can, you, you can do that to the person next to you. That would be lovely. Elite people, you're so welcome here. Uh, <laughs> we're a bunch of great people. <laughs> I'm so glad I could fly away again. <laughs> Niels will speak to you if you're um, traumatized. Okay, faith of a Canaanite woman. Listen to this. This is amazing. You guys have read this, but let's, I want to, we're going to read it and then go through it almost verse by verse and um, and say what the implication is for us. So I'm going to read it to us. Jesus went away from there, withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she's crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only, he speaks to her now, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. This is the bull terrier. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O oh woman, great is your faith. Be done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. Her daughter was healed instantly. I was just reminded as I'm reading this that, um, that faith is really the only thing that pleases God. Okay, it's, it's not our works, it's not our, um, it's not, he's pleased with our character. He loves it when we're Christ-like, but faith really pleases him. It moves him. Um, and I want us to think about our faith this morning. Okay, don't think about your neighbor or the person sitting next to you. Think about your faith. Um, does it please God? Is it in such a way um, pleasing unto him that he'll say, hey, have you seen this one or that one or that one? They really trust me. And I think the issue about faith, and some of us, we've, we know this, but it's, it's trust. Can we truly trust them? Can we truly trust them? I think we've got a lot of testimonies in this room of people that can say over and over and over again, God has been faithful to us. He's been faithful to, to us in His promises. He's been faithful to us in, in our relationships. He's been faithful to us in our finances. He's been faithful in our marriages. He's been faithful in our kids. Um, God is faithful. He can be trusted. Now, I can say that to you all morning till I'm blue in the face. If you don't experience it, you'll never know it. If you've never trusted God for finances, you'll not know that He will provide when, when you need Him. If you've never done it, then, then I can't really help you. But I can say, hey, he can. I've got a testimony. If he did it for me, he will do it for you. If he did it for, for the leaders in this church, he will do it for you guys. He's not a respecter of person. He doesn't have um, certain people that he favor over others saying, you guys, if you walk by faith, but you, did, you shouldn't walk by faith. Okay, he, he will be faithful. He's trustworthy. We can trust him. He's faithful. So the first verse um, says this, verse, or the second verse, verse 22 says, this prayer that this woman prays, this Canaanite woman. Now, first of all, Jews and Canaanites didn't really mix. Okay, so it was weird for, for her to know about Jesus. 
she's been brought up, we must remember this, she's been brought up um, serving other gods. She's not a Jewish lady that's been brought up in Jewish schools and taught the ways of God and what God has done in the past. She came from a different background. So for her to have this persistent faith is even more noteworthy. Like, this is amazing. She, she didn't grow up with all the stories, all the promises, um, everything that, that the Jews had. She was from a different tribe and a different nation. And so, so she prays this, have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. Have mercy on me. The other place we hear a prayer like this is when Jesus say, when the man beats his chest, Lord, have mercy on me, save me. And Jesus says, this one will be justified because of his faith. Now, I just, when I read this and I see this response, this is a, a woman in need, she's desperate, okay? I know some of us in here thinks that maybe there's a demon in my kids. <laughs> okay, I is not stout. You not you not um, <laughs> everyone's kids doesn't have demons. Um, I remember when Ariella was um, very small, she had um, night kulik. So, so when the sun would go down, she would start to cry until the sun would come up in the morning. And I thought she had a demon. We tried everything. We prayed, we wailed, we cried, we, we anointed. We, I repented from, from primary school sins that I thought maybe this is, this is the open door. I, I, I did everything necessary to get these things out, but nothing worked, literally six months. And then just one day she stopped. Um, so we were living in the, in the, in the main road um, in a flat there. And normally two or three o'clock in the morning, we, we, we didn't know what to do anymore. And so we took her in the car and we drove and then she fell asleep. And you, it's next to Crown Bar. You guys know where that is? Almost to Gim, <laughs> Gim's entrance. And then two or three o'clock after we've, like, we've struggled the whole night. And then we would put her in bed. And then some of these massive um, lorries would come and just blow off this steam there in front of that. Like, and she would sit straight up in the bed. And I'm like, I'm going to eat this person. <laughs> I'm going to run into the street and I'm going to lose my salvation here. And Ilana, every time she's like, no, 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 Leafy, I said, please, play in it. Uh, but but what, is, what, is, what is something that we can take out of that is, is that Jesus is willing to help us with our kids. Yeah, I, I, I know our kids doesn't necessarily have this kind of need, but, but you do have needs in your house. I, I know that. Um, we do need God's intervention and he's willing to help us. The other, the other father that said, um, my boy has a demon. This is a daughter. He said, my boy has a demon. What does the demon do? Throws him to the ground and wants to kill him, throw him in the fire or in the water. Um, and so this demon wants to kill him, and Jesus healed the boy immediately. So God is interested in, in our family life. He's interested in our kids. And um, I want us actually to pray for our kids this morning. That, that I love this, the worship and everyone here in front and, and just experiencing God with us. That's amazing. But God is interested, guys. Pray for your kids. You know when you should pray for them? Okay, you can pray for them when they're awake as well, but when they sleep is the best time. Really, their spirit is alive. You can speak over them, pray over them. Trust God that, that Christ will be formed in them. If you're worried, get someone and pray with them. Say, hey, I want to trust for my kids. I want to trust for their salvation. This is one thing we saw in this trip um, is just how God moves in the lives of our kids. Um, Johnny shared a testimony, and I think we, we, we um, put it on Facebook two, two days ago. And just the people's response, like this is a seven-year-old boy. Uh, Johnny was more shocked about the guy who's, there's a, they prayed for a man on the night market street. And, and Jonathan has got this weird he, he's, he won't know I say this, but he's a, he, when we pray for people, he's a, he's a real charismatic, okay? So like, he, he just do this. <laughs> I don't know where he gets it, but he, he doesn't go and lay hands on, or look him in the eye. He just stands like this. <laughs> and this day it was again, 
but he luckily kept his eyes open and um, they prayed for a man, him and Luke, and another, he was a student in Stellenbosch, Luke, he's 20, 24, and Luke called him and said, hey, pray with me for this guy, and he fell on a, um, a brick, and his whole, whole knee was open. They prayed for him. Now, Jonathan, if there's some, someone in our family that we can trust when he says something, it's him. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't lie. He's very honest, very integrous. Um, and, and the wound healed. It, 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 he said he saw how it sort of shrinked in front of him. And that was the testimony that he shared from, from the outreach. Um, and, and I can see the response online. People's just like, whoa, this kid is seven. Um, and he was just there. I, I don't think it's, it's necessarily his faith that, that moved this. But he was there and he saw it. There's a part of it that God wants to move um, in, our, in our kids' lives. So, so keep on contending for that, guys. Have faith for the salvation of your kids, that they'll be not just saved, but spiritful, that we will baptize them, um, that God will use them mightily. They can do what you guys do. Okay, they can do what we do. They can, they can go out, they can preach the gospel. Um, Areala preached to, to five or six Philippine kids that were playing. And, and, and Jonathan actually came to me and said, like, we, can, we can preach to them. I'm like, yes, Johnny, go. And then we walked together and he's like, no, I can't. And I'm like, no, 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 I'll stand here. It's like, no, no, let's call Areala. And so he called Areala and then she, she preached to them and we prayed for them. Asked them, hey, do you want to give your life to Jesus? And um, I, was, I was there just looking at it and it's just amazing to see their faith. And I was like, later on, I was like, sissy, jy kan preek. <laughs> it's like, oh, you, think, you think so? Um, and, and, and I just want to encourage us, like God wants to use our kids, okay? He wants to use them um, with their friends. So, so, so please do equip them, pray for them, contend for them. Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon, but he did not answer her word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, send her away. She's crying out after us. That verse 23 is what, he did not answer her word. <laughs> Isn't that a bit offensive? He didn't answer her. This woman was like, Lord, have mercy on me. And the disciples said, please send her away because she's irritating. Okay, so she must have been loud. Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy. She was walking behind them as they were walking. Persistent. Persistent. I will not leave until you hear me. Now, what I'm afraid, if I read this, I'm afraid. And I, I know that we grow in relationship. We grow in understanding one another and communication. And we want to be heard. We want to be seen. We want to be loved. Uh, I mean, that's marriage 101. That's why lamb is so amazing. Um, if you do lamb, you get kids. So please go and do lamb. Um, but but, but we're, we're sort of conditioned in this way that... We must be seen, we must be heard. And we see here that Jesus didn't respond to her. And my fear is that we're not tenacious enough that when he doesn't respond, we just stop. We just leave. I think we must remember that God is sovereign. He can respond if he wants to and, and or not. Okay? He can respond if he wants to. If he doesn't respond, what is your response? That's, that's my, if, if our, our will doesn't align with the will of God and we pray and, and nothing happens, what do you do? Do you just leave it? Okay, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm not saying if you've prayed for the BMV and nothing is happening, pray a bit more so that the Volkswagen will turn to the BMV and the garage. I'm not saying that. I'm saying when we're praying and we know that this aligns with the will of God and nothing is happening. What is your response? What is your response? I can tell you what my response sometimes is, is I, I feel sorry for myself. Why is this not happening? Huh? Can we be honest? Is this some of us? Like that is a response or I'm, I'm semi offended. I'm semi offended. God, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you coming through for me? Why aren't you speaking to me? Why aren't you responding? 
And we see this woman, and this is why Jesus loves her response so much. We see that she's just persistent. She says, I'm not, I'm not going to just take no for an answer. I'm not going to feel sorry for myself. I'm not going to sit in the corner and feel I'm not heard. God doesn't hear me. He doesn't love me. He doesn't see me. Okay, I, I work with a lot of young people, and I hear that often. They get offended and disillusioned because they think that God doesn't hear them anymore. He doesn't answer my prayers anymore. And then, then the response will be, hey, have you, have you persisted a bit? Have you fasted? Have you tried? Have you, have you done anything and everything that you can for God to do a miracle and to have some breakthrough in your life? Because normally we just give up too, too quickly. I think there's a lot of us in this room that we would have seen breakthrough if we just pressed through. But we gave up too quickly. We let it go too quickly. We were offended too quickly or discouraged too quickly. And I, I was actually, um, I changed my sermon yesterday because I actually wanted to speak about um, discouragement a bit. What do we do when we do that, when we feel like that? Okay, so, so think about your own heart and the things that you've stood in faith for in the past and, and think, think of, did you really persisted in faith or did you give up too quickly? Did you give up too quickly? What did the disciples say? Jesus didn't answer her. The disciples said, please, Jesus, would you send her away? She's crying out after us. That's not really loving pastoral something to say. Okay, am I right? Okay. Think about this. The elders and kneels. Um, someone comes and, and, and just, just walks and just wants help. And then the elders say, please, kneels, would you just send her away? Okay, would we ever see that person again? No, we'll never see that person again. So they'll leave. Okay, so this is what happens here. This is a, please, Jesus, this woman is irritating us. She's making um, a scene. Can you just please send her away? I think one of the things in our faith is what people think and what people say that we get disillusioned and we stop trying. What people say, what others say. Do we, do we mind what they say so much that we stop trying? And I think that that's something that I'm really sensitive to the, these last few weeks is just the fear of man. And we spoke about it this morning that we will not have a fear of the Lord, guys, if there's a fear of man and their opinion in our life. If we value so much what other people say and think, even if they're disciples, even if they're leaders, if we value so much what they say, that we leave what we're persisting for in faith, if we leave that because they say, hey, just leave it, then, then we, we're not going to get anything. We're going to be double-minded. We're going to be fearful. We're going to have a, a fear of man. Um, and, and I want to actually call us this morning and ask us and invite us to really walk in the authority that Jesus has given us. If we're filled with the fear of man and what people think, we will not walk in our authority. The enemy will take it from you and he'll use it against you. <laughs> he'll definitely just take it. You will have no authority. Okay, Jesus said, you've got all authority to trample serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and guys not just for you and your household but for the valley if we send 10 of you guys into a really difficult place neighborhood in this town it should change because we have authority the authority that christ has given us it, it shouldn't change because we're eloquent in words and we can preach and we can smile. It should change because we can pray for people and they'll be healed. We can preach the gospel and they'll be saved. We'll cast out demons. That's why we're there. That's the authority that Christ has given us. And if we're filled with a fear of what people think, we will not walk in it. We will not walk in it. And I know that that in this house, there can be a faith that changes neighborhoods, changes the valley. And I want to I ask you guys, don't give away your authority. Don't just be so 
mindful of what others say and think that you forget to walk in faith. Okay? I, um, there's, a, there's a girl called, her name is Caitlin, part of the Fire and Fragrance community. She's 27. Okay? She's really small, like physically small. She's, I think she's like, yeah, I don't want to guess her weight, but she's really small, okay? Um, think about a, a really small young girl. And um, she did a school called Revival and Reformation, Rev and the Rev, they call it. And during this school, she had an amazing encounter with Jesus where he said to her, I want you to, to get the prostitutes in Potsdam off of the streets, now, Caitlin is a chemical engineer. She finished it. She did her master's in it. She can, <laughs> she can do whatever. And uh, she started a ministry called Woven. And what they do is on Thursday nights, they go into the darkest part of Potsdam and they go and minister to them. And at first, I thought, the, the father in me thought, this is really dangerous. You should not go there alone. Um, but she doesn't go alone. There's a team of people that goes with her. But you guys will not believe how even gang members get saved when Caitlin ministers to them. I think they're so taken aback because she's small and she's white and she's in this very dangerous area. And what are you doing here? But she's speaking with authority and they get saved. The prostitutes get saved. She's taught them how to, um, how to, um, you, you, what, say it in English. Alle, ja, alle, sy het geleer brei en kleere maak. Woven. And so she employs them because they have to work. They have to get a salary now. They have to um, take care of their family. And she said the main thing that the problem is, is these girls want to take care of their families. And that's why they do this. You know how much they earn per, per hour, per client? 50 rand. 50 rand. That is to cry about. And Caitlin just goes in every Thursday, ministers to these, to these people, get them off the streets, um, teach them how to do this, and they start a new life, transformed. If I had to choose someone for this ministry, I would not choose Caitlin. <laughs> okay, because she's small and it's dangerous. But, but she's brave and she uses her faith for this. And we see the kingdom come in the darkest part of Potsdam. We were in a, just another story. There's a nightclub in Potsdam. I don't know who studied there. Just, just, um, Johan, you, yes, Imne, that's where you, maybe you met in, in, in Bourbons. No, no, no. But he blast Mark. But there's a there's a nightclub in the heart of Potsdam called Bourbons. Um, they call they call it Poch Vegas. Okay, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. They're like this is the wildest place for very conservative Afrikaans people. They lose all their values when they go. You is. <laughs> But so Bourbons is a, is a, a dark place. Um, and the owner of Bourbons, 11 years, the, the people, some of the people in this community have been praying for Bourbons. Say, Lord, we want this property. And um, I mean, they were, they were actually students back then just having worship nights. And they're like, Lord, would you give us bourbons for 11 years? And the owner of bourbons heard about it four months ago. And he phoned, he phoned them and said, hey, I want to sell this place. I can't. My conscience is eating me. I, I just want to get, get rid of it. Would you buy it? And they're like, yes, we'll buy it. And he said he wants 16 million. Okay, now, if you're, a, if you're a missions base that doesn't pay anyone any salaries, <laughs> to get 16 million is a miracle. And they, he said, you've got 90 days. And that's like, we'll do it. And so the next day, the papers got a hold of the story. 12 newspapers 
uh, up there published Bourbon's Becoming a Missions Base. <laughs> People were so mad. They were commenting on the, on, on the news feeds on, on Facebook. They're like, where are we going to care now? Why is this happening? Why can't these people just stay off of our precious bourbons? And this was the comments. And so this owner phoned um, Gabriel, the leader. He's like, if you are not going to raise this 16 million in 90 days, we're both going to look really stupid. So please just raise the money. <laughs> so, no pressure. Got it. Let's do it. And um, so it was an amazing journey. Uh, there was, there was 840 people that gave to buy bourbons. There were students that gave eight, eight rand a week. Every week they deposited eight rand into the account. <laughs> but, and and uh, there was people from all over, business people got a hold of it. Um, and everyone sewed in two days before the cut off, the, we, we had seven million. <laughs> and uh, we started to panic, we're like, we're going to look like, a, look like fools. Please, Jesus. And um, they've got a, I, I told you guys about the prayer room. They have a prayer room there, and these guys can pray. So the, the Monday morning, we had to have the money by Wednesday. The Monday morning, they literally felt like they're going to lift the roof over the place. Like they were, they were going for it. Jesus, come through. And the Wednesday, we had all the money. 20 million, even money for renovations. <laughs> and they didn't know they did, the, the, the group didn't know. They had a group that they posted. Everyone posted, hey, 20,000, 1,000, 50,000, 200. So everyone did fundraising. The whole 140 staff members did fundraising, which is amazing. Not just the, the senior leader. Everyone did fundraising. And, and they didn't post, hey, we got 13 million. <laughs> so we, we left the, the, the last morning. We had a worship in Bourbons, the morning. Okay, so, so it was, the floor was still, you know, when, when it's a sty, it was like, <coughs> <coughs> um, and, and the men's bathroom was full of obhoy, just everywhere, and we had a worship in this nightclub, it was amazing, when I got in there, I just saw everyone crying, now I don't know bourbons, I never, I don't have no connotation to it, like, I know Stellenbosch's places, but I don't know, <laughs> I don't know Porch's places. <laughs> and um, the first guy I spoke to, Brendan, he's a lawyer now, he's part of the community, got two kids, and you would never say this of him. He says, Gilly, you see that stage? I was on that stage last time I was in here without my shirt drinking Brannewein. Like Brennas? Okay. <laughs> And so we worshiped, the presence of God was there, which was amazing. And then they announced, hey, we've got all the money. Bourbons is ours. And I've never seen people cry like it, like ugly cry. Like, um, <laughs> this was really, this was bad. But um, their faith was tested. They were stretched. And not just one or two people, everyone in the community. Like the, the night before, a girl went to do evangelism before Bourbons, and the bouncers saw her. Um, it's Greta Witt's daughter. And she's part of the community, and they saw her, and she said to them, in faith, tomorrow we have this place. <laughs> and the bouncers cussed her and said, is there, there's the money, laughed at her. It's like, are the money just gonna, gonna be in your account? And she's like, yes, it's just gonna be there. <laughs> and so the next morning, um, the money was there. Or the, the money was there. And it, it, it came through, through uh, business people that said, hey, we wanna, we wanna see God's kingdom come in Potsdam. We wanna train 10,000 young people on that premise um, and change not just the narrative for this one place, but the whole bolt. The whole bolt is like the area where the students um, just go out and get lost. And, but we want to change the, the narrative on that bolt and say, Porch of Sturm will be a place where people send their kids to meet Jesus. It won't be Porch Vegas anymore. It will be a place where people send their kids and they will meet Jesus. 
And people bought into it. And it's just amazing to see this whole community, their faith went like, wow, God did it. He promised and he did it. And guys, if, if he can do it for them, he can do it for us. Huh? What building do we want? No building. Okay, I know. I know. Let's just stay here a bit. But if God can do it for them. <coughs> Sorry, Niels. Niels is going trauma response. <laughs> If, um, if he can do it for them, he can do it for us. Um, he did not answer her. His disciples came and said, Lord, please just send her away. And he answered, I was, this is what Jesus answered her. Okay, I'm going, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be until 12, don't worry. He answered her, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So he says, no, I didn't come for you. Okay, we speak about being tenacious and persistent and having offense and feeling sorry for ourselves. Jesus, the Son of God, the man that, that you've heard all the stories about, that you bring your precious daughter's problem to him. He's like, I wasn't sent for you. That's his response. Um, and then she, she, she knelt before him saying, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. And he answered, it's not right to take, second offense coming right here, it's not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. <laughs> I mean, she could have stood up there and said, Jesus, you're calling me a dog. <laughs> this, is, this is sort of what he's doing. Why well, I'm saying this is offensive. I, I, I believe Jesus was testing her and seeing if she would persist in faith. And what he's saying is true, but still it's, this is nicer ways to say it. <laughs> um, I, I, I take the children's bread and throw it to you. And she said, yes, Lord, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. And then he saw this woman is serious. She's not going to back down. She wants it. I think he saw like uh, nothing that I can say can, can, can um, get her off of this. Jesus answered her, great is your faith. Be done for you as you desire. And the daughter was healed instantly. Jesus will respond to faith. Guys, he will respond to faith. And my, my invitation for us this morning is, um, is to press past our offense, our discouragement, our um, self-pity and say, if he did it for someone else, he can do it for me. If there was a revival in the Hebrides or somewhere else, he can do it in the valley. Huh? If he could pour out himself in other places of the earth, he can do it here as well. And um, I know we, we start to grow. Faith is almost like a muscle. I know we start to grow in faith and trusting God with personal things. But I, my invitation for us this morning is to, as a house, to have not only faith for personal stuff in your house, but for something bigger. Not like, Caitlin doesn't have to worry about the prostitutes of Portchester. She can just say, this is someone else's problem. I'm, I'm a qualified chemical engineer. <laughs> Some, and I'm a, I'm a girl and I'm single. Someone else can take care of this. She, she did it. No one else is coming to fix the problems in our city. No one else. You need to do it. I need to do it. No one else is coming for the high schools. We need to do it. No one else is going to adopt all the kids. We need to do it. So, so this morning, I want to I want to pray for us um, that we will press past that emotions, that hurt, that offense, and know that faith looks like something. It's it's a tangible thing. Faith without works is dead. It's it's it's. James says, "Hey, show me your faith. Show me what you did, and and say to me, you have faith." It's my own paraphrase. You understand? Like, show me, show me. The other day I, um, I spoke to, to someone and we were busy with evangelism. I can't remember. And, and someone told me, it must be so nice to lead someone to the Lord. And I was, my first response was like, you can do it as well. <laughs> it's not special people. Like all of us. We can just, after this service, we can just all go to the mall and lead every single one walking there. Uh, preach the gospel to them. We can't say how they respond, but we can do it. Okay, we can do it. 
every one of us use the authority that God has given us for other people. Use it for their healing, use it for their deliverance, use it for their salvation. And I believe we're gonna just see amazing things. This, this hall can be filled with people that came to Christ because of our ministry. Not because we just brought them to church and Neil should preach for them, which he can, but you can do it as well. Um, that, that we will go out, reach our friends, reach our neighbors. Guys, it's one last thing. What's one thing about this valley? I love this place dearly. Okay, it's the most beautiful place. Yesterday, I was sitting there in the pavilion. I'm like, oh my goodness, these mountains. Send me back, Jesus, right now. Um, I'm, I'm ready, okay? But, but one thing about this valley is we get v caught up in stuff that's not really important. Okay, who wins in the schools? And I'm sorry if I offend you. It doesn't really matter. Because no one's going no to worry in two years. But we get caught up in stuff that's not the kingdom. Life goes like this here. Okay, it's, it's fast. It's faster than puts of Sturm, definitely. <laughs> it's not the fastest, but it's fast. And, and we get caught up in the school stuff and in everything that needs to be done. And I just want to, I want to, I want to, ask us, would, would we keep the, the things of Jesus in front of us? That what we sang, Jesus, you're our vision. Like, oh, we're your friends. You can ask us anything. We want to do what you want us to do. We, and, and I tell you, it's the same things, guys. He didn't change. He's not going to say, hey, please just win interschools for me. He doesn't care. He's going to like, is there safe people that needs to be saved, healed, delivered, get into my kingdom, get discipled, take them into your home and love them. So let's stand. I'm going to pray for us. I want to, I want to pray for us this morning um, for, and I see this in my own life, okay? So I'm including myself in this prayer. Um, but I want, to, I want to pray for us against passivity, that we will not just be passive. We will not just let life go by. Um, the years when our kids are young, will we just be like, I just I need to make it until the weekend. Okay, that, that we will not be passive about the things of God. And we will see it happen. We will see it happen. We will see it happen in this church. We will see it happen in our neighborhoods, in our houses, everywhere. I'm sorry, I know I'm the guy that always beats this drum. But I think it's so good for you guys. That let me be that guy that beats this drum, okay? <laughs> it's good for us, okay? It's good for us. So Jesus, we love you. We know you love the valley. You love these people. People that's not in our church this morning. You've given us authority. You've given us the ability to walk by faith. And we just want to say this morning, we're sorry that we're passive. We're sorry that sometimes we get caught up in everything happening here. We love you. You've saved us, healed us, cleansed us, made us totally new. And this morning, we want to just say, use us. Use us, send us, speak to us about anything in this valley that, that's grieving you. Anything. We're willing to go. This morning specifically, Lord, we want to we wanna move past our own emotions. We want to move past our own offense, our own discouragement, our own self-pity and say that we want to persist in faith. We want to be a bunch of bull terriers that will not take no for an answer. Let's say that if our will align with your will, you will do it because you're faithful. What you've promised, you will do. What you've promised, you will do. want us to just to create a moment here on your own I'm not going to call you to the front or anything but I, I want you to just search your own heart 
and this morning if there's anything that that you feel that maybe you're passive you feel passive in your faith or maybe you feel like hey i've given up i'm, I'm there's not really something that i'm standing in faith for outside of my house i want you just to pray a simple prayer so lord will you speak to me will you speak to me about something else than my own house Lord, we know we don't have to th take responsibility for other people's messes. But that's what you did. You took responsibility for our mess, for our sin. And we want to do the same. There's no one else coming. Come and fill us this morning. Fill us this morning, Lord. Thank you for freedom in this house. Freedom in this house. Thank you for that rivers of life running underneath this floor, Lord, just waiting to gush out, to bring revival, to bring renewal, to bring life. We bless you. We bless you. Let's just keep on praying. Just keep on contending a bit. The Lord is here. He's in the room. Let's do business with Him. Just, to, just repent. If we need to do repentance, let's just ask Him for His voice. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. prayer for persistent faith just quickly raise your hand i'm not going to ask you to do anything else put your hand on your heart i'm with you guys this morning lord we want persistent faith we don't want to be put off so easily we want soft hearts and thick skins we want to go for the things that's on your heart. Would you help us? Would you impart just this morning, just the gift of faith? We receive it. We receive it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Stir our faith. You are the giver of faith. You're the one that imparts it to us. And then we use it for your kingdom and your glory. Thank you, Jesus. We just pray your peace over everyone in this room. Fill us. Fill us with your peace. I really sense the Lord is here to bring freedom to some of us. So I want to ask if, if that's you, we're going to end off with a worship song. If, if you're struggling to have freedom, if it's in your mind, if it's um, in anything that you're, that's happening in your life, I want you just to come to the front. We would love to pray with you. Contending for freedom, your own personal freedom. But of power, love, and a sound mind. So we pray, Holy Spirit, make us brave to lean in and listen. Give us the courage to say yes to the things that you call us to. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for just an apostolic mandate that rests on just this house, that we want to live as saint ones understanding that where we are and what we're called to do is greater than, than just the day by day. Um, we love you. Your kingdom first. 
you first. Settle this in us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Give us ears to hear, eyes to see, and hearts to perceive, and the courage to say yes. So Lord, we just honor you in this journey that we are on and, and how you are leading us and, and, and blessing of your presence, you speaking to us. So we just thank you. Thank you for today. Thank you for your word. We receive it. Hey, so the band is going to continue playing and, and um, we're going to land our time here together right now. Um, we did receive a word that if there's anybody that wants to just, you feel empty, you want to be f- just feel filled and you want somebody to pray with you, the Lord is here and uh, we would love to lay hands on you. Um, if there is anybody that uh, we also received a word, if, if you have pain, your pain might just be the doorway through into, into your breakthrough. Um, that the Lord is, if you're standing in pain right now, we would love to pray with you because Jesus is wanting to bring change in your pain and healing in that and and blessing on the other side of it. So we want to invite you to that as well. Um, And then just lastly, we have a pancake ministry at the back of the hall, right? Get you guys smiling. But um, just for the parents, we're not going to give pancakes to the kids. So if you want to get pancakes for your kids, you as a parent must go and get pancakes for your kids. Um, They're okay. Otherwise, it's going to... is going to be like the scripture that Gilly read. But anyway, so hey, I want to bless you guys. And we don't only want to say goodbye, we want to send you. We want to send you from this place in the name of Jesus to go as sons and daughters, as anointed ones, to go and live out there as the light of the world and the salt of the earth. We love you and we bless you. Okay, anybody that wants ministry, I can ask the ministry team as well if you guys would move to the front. If there's anybody that needs prayer for anything, we'd love to pray with you. Um, please stay for some pancakes and coffee. We kind of got it so that uh, we can just linger and have some fellowship together. We love you, church. Enjoy your week.